presentation. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. So everyone, this is Yehuda Volda. He is the general manager <coughs> of Innova. Um, this is a company that manufactures in Italy, sells all over the world, and I has, I mean, it, in my experience, is one of the very best options for retrofitting home HVAC systems, the least power, most flexibility. I have all these things why I wanted you guys to see, hey, check out this product, um, which is a form factor, to be clear. There are other products that look and function similar to this, so this isn't intended to be just like a sales pitch for um, the Innova, but check it out. This is a, a really excellent product appropriate for a lot of uh, construction. A lot of my affordable housing developments are using this, so Yehuda, please take it away. Okay, so I decided while I was listening to the last lecture that we'll start with the controls, <laughs> given that's where we left off. So, okay, our unit's extremely flexible and we allow all kinds of controls. We have an onboard controller, onboard touch controller, where you can do all the settings except for programming timers um, on the onboard controller. We have two wall controller options. One is a full touch screen where you can do anything you want, uh, settings, timers, whatever you like to do. We also have a simpler interface that goes on the wall where you have options for having icons and text or icons without text or text without icons. More excitingly, we have Wi-Fi apps that work on iOS, Android, and Windows. And we also connect to Ift, Alexa, um, Modebus, and BACnet. I'm not sure how common the Modebus or BACnet would be for residential. Also, we connect through third-party thermostats. So if you want to have a Nest, Ecobee, Sensi, or any of those uh, smart thermostats, it will connect to the unit. One thing which I'll note is important is that an inverter air conditioner, which I'll get to in a few minutes, is different than a regular air conditioner or heater. And that is that typically a regular thermostat will not work because they simply turn the compressor on and off. An inverter compressor is computer driven. So we actually have a specially built board where these thermostats send a signal um, to our board to turn off. And then our board decides what to do with it after that point. So we can go to smart thermostats as well as some people want to have the very basic thermostats, just simpler. They just turn the unit on or pick the temperature and put the unit on and they don't know anything else. So we connect to all of those. All right, so let me back up now, <laughs> go back to our beginning of our presentation. So for starters, we're a European-based company. We're based in Italy. All of our units are manufactured in Italy. The reason why our company exists is because in Europe, especially in Italy, you have a lot of ancient buildings where they were built long before air conditioning existed, and now they want to have air conditioning. One of the constraints is, is that with a lot of landmark buildings, you can't add air conditioning. You can't add an outdoor unit. There's nowhere to put one. It's against the rules, regulations, etc. So we've developed an air conditioner which sits inside the home. It's extremely quiet, as quiet as a ductless unit, um, and yet it only requires two small holes that vent to the outside. So I'll show you a quick preview over here of just some products that we've done around the world. Um, here you can see, oh, whoops, sorry, hold on. Um, how do I get this thing to start? Sorry, okay, so here we have Little Bory Hall. You can see over here our little teeny vents, and here is the hotel. Here's an ancient building in Switzerland. Again, it's highlighting the grills. You'll see it afterwards. Here's the building, you can barely see the grills. This is a modern tower in um, Chile where they decided to use our system for individual control and efficiency, and you can see the grills. The Coliseum, you all know the Coliseum in Italy. They needed air conditioning too, and there are grills. Here's another hotel in the UK, I mean, Ireland. Here is a eco resort in Italy. They wanted hotel, uh, units for each room, and in Canada, this building was designed before air conditioning was common in Canada, and they needed to add air conditioning onto the building. Here's an ancient vid, um, villa in Italy, and here's a modern office building where, again, we puncture it through the glass. This is to give you a scope of like where our air conditioners go. We're currently sold in 36 countries um, and have hundreds of thousands of them in service. Okay, Sean asked me to explain inverter technology. I thought it was pretty obvious, though I guess most people aren't so familiar with this. So let me explain the benefits of inverter technology. I don't know if how many of you are familiar with inverters. That's something that's common. So you may hear the terminology. What an inverter does is you basically have a compressor where there are two kinds of compressor. You have a fixed speed compressor, which can only do whatever speed it's set for, 9,000 BTUs, and it can either do 9,000 BTUs or zero. When you have an inverter compressor, it's a flexible linear compressor. What that means is that it can do anything from, let's say it's designed for 9,000 BTU, but it can go as low as 1,000 BTUs and as high as 11,000 BTUs. 
The benefit of that is multiple, and I'll go through each of those benefits. First of all, your room is, con is always comfortable and consistent temperature. When you have a fixed speed unit, I don't know if you, how many of you have noticed it, but the compressor will kick on and kick off constantly. So your thermostat, your set point, let's say is 72 degrees, 73 degrees, and your thermostat realizes that the room temperature is now uh, 75 degrees, sends a signal back to the unit, turn the compressor on, the compressor kicks on, and it will cool the room down to two degrees or one and a half degrees lower than the set point. Now it'll take another three, four, five minutes, 10 minutes, the room to heat up again, thermostat kicks on, kicks the compressor on, and you basically have this constant fight of the compressor, where the compressor goes on, off, on, off, on, off, raising temperature lower. So you don't, really, you don't really have a consistent temperature. The inverter compressor starts up and then maintains a consistent temperature by giving the exact amount of output that it needs to match the demand of the room. So if you'd have 10 people walking in the room, the compressor would kick on and increase its speed and give more output. People leave, it reduces it, or if people are sitting in the room, it would keep, the consistent, keep a consistent temperature. Another benefit is that how long it takes to heat or cool up your room when you walk in the room. So an inverter compressor can harness all of the power that it has available to it, 130%, and cool down the room much quicker, while a fixed speed will take half an hour or longer for it to heat down, or heat up or cool down. Noise factor is a lot quieter, just by definition, because you don't have that constant flux of the compressor kicking on, off, on, off, on, off. The inverter stays on the whole time at a lower decibel. Most importantly is wear and tear. When you have, if you compare it to a jogger versus a person who's running really fast and braking, so the person who's running fast and pausing, running fast and pausing, is going to wear out a lot faster than the drug than the jogger continues at a consistent pace. So the in, the inverter compressor is always on. It's not wearing down the components by constantly turning them on, turning them off, on, off, on, off the whole time. So the unit will wear better, last longer, and have less problems when it's operating. And of course most important thing is efficiency. So the inverter is way more efficient than on a fixed speed unit. The reason is not just because it doesn't go on and off, on, off, on, off the whole time, but the difference is, is that a regular compressor, like I said earlier, only has one speed. It runs the full speed the whole time. An inverter compressor can operate at 30% capacity for most of the time. Because of the way it's designed, an inverter compressor's rating is based on the typical design temperature of, of the what's set out for that room, 9,000 BTUs. But when you run an inverter compressor at let's say 3,000 BTUs, not only to take less power than 9,000 BTUs proportionately, but actually it takes dramatically less power because the lower, the less of the percentage of the compressor you use, the more efficient the compressor is. So for example, it is an easy numbers. If the compressor at 9,000 BTUs used 9,000 watts of power, which it never would, and I'll say 900 X is probably more accurate, 900 watts of power. So you would think at 3,000 BTUs, it used 300 watts of power. But that's not actually right. At 3,000 BTUs, it might only use about 100 watts of power. So the inverter compressor, while you may have two units that will have the same EER rating and have the same volt, the same wattage for both of them, the inverter compressor will use around 60% less energy. All right, now we'll jump to the technology of a heat pump. I don't know if, how many of you find how a heat pump works. Heat pump works very similar in cooling as it does in heating. So in the summer, you basically have your cold air inside, your hot air outside. In the winter, it reverses, and you get your cold air blowing out and your hot air blowing in. So when people think here a heat pump, they think it's only gonna give them heat but a heat pump works for heating and, condition, and air conditioning, cooling, and it works a lot, lot more efficient than baseboard heating, um, gas, or oil, because the coefficient of a heat pump gives you typically three to a one performance. So for example, on an electrical heater, I hope not losing anybody, on an electric heater, you'll use one kilowatt of electricity for one kilowatt of heat. On oil, the same thing, whatever you're putting in, you're getting out. With a heat pump, you'll typically get a three or a four to one ratio because of the way it, because of the way it operates, it's way more efficient. Um, Sean asked me to address, to address refrigerants. So our current system uses R410 as most systems do today. However, due to many reasons, we are phasing in the R32 refrigerant and hope that by January of 2022, all of our systems 
will be R32 refrigerant. R32 Woo! refrigerant That's is much more really green. Awesome. Sorry? That's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, in Europe, they're not using R32. In Europe, um, we're using propane, which is actually more efficient than R32 and cleaner, but it has some, um, I guess, danger associated with it, and the U.S. doesn't seem so ready for it um, in small quantities. So, but we'll be bringing in R32. It's a question of, we have a technology that could do it now. It's a question of getting the UL approvals and everything else required to switch our systems over. We need a quick basis of our system. So while mo our unit's a monoblock unit, and what that means is that when you have a typical split system, which you have a central air split, or you have a central air mini duct lift, central air cassette, et cetera. So you have two components. You have your indoor component, which looks like this, and a wall hung unit, or your central air unit looks bigger than this, it goes to ducts. And then you have your outdoor, and your outdoor condenser unit. You know, we're not seeing your slides advance, sorry. It's still on the You're not? slide. Oh. Hold on. What is, what is it on still? There you go. Now it's going to the monoblock, no outdoor unit. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, it may have been sort of a lag. Could you, but before you go um, on the refrigerant question, you said that propane was a better one. My main question is which refrigerant is going to get us the coldest temperatures with your design? Because it seems like, you know, we have a lot of New York City and Michigan and Chicago. We have a lot of cold cities in the United States that need to retrofit their buildings. Mm -hmm. And we need it uh, <clears throat> goes as cold as possible because we get polar vortexes now that take temperatures, you know, temporarily, but temporarily could be a day or two, way below zero, you know, negative 10, negative 15 Fahrenheit. Um, w will your product in the future be able to handle sub-zero temperatures? And Absolutely. We can, a we can actually handle it right now. Uh -huh. um, it will handle it. it the, the truth is the, um, the efficiency and the performance with the R32, with the propane, and with the R410A are pretty similar. Because our unit's so small, the difference is not that great. Um, it may be like a difference of maybe three, four percent increase in performance and efficiency, but it's not a great number. Uh, so how cold do you think a unit like yours can go? Our unit right now can go to minus five degrees. Minus five? Oh, I thought it was up at 15 Fahrenheit, minus five. Yes, we actually made some changes recently um, in our, our board and how we control the compressor um, because the speed is all variable and so are the frequencies. So we're able to go down to minus five right now. It, let me just interrupt for one second. It was never really, interestingly enough, our units were never really used too much for heat. Um, I would say of the probably uh, 200,000 of these units that we have installed all over the world, probably 80% um, of them are used for cooling only. It just happens to be that because it's a heat pump, it can get heat. Um, so the, the, um, we never really focused so much on our heating performance because it really wasn't important to people. So, but now that we are focusing on it, we've done some tweaks and increased our heating capacity. Did I lose you? Oh, no, I was just going to let you continue. Oh, Sorry about okay, that. Fine, okay, fine. <laughs> okay. The answer. Okay. Um, all right. Let's take a look at what's inside our unit. So, first of all, our unit, as I explained, is a monoblock. So, there's only one piece. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I missed that scene over there. Um, okay. So, typically, you have your indoor and your outdoor. Our unit packages everything together. So, here on the bottom of our unit, you have the equivalent of the outdoor compressor components. On the top part of our unit, you have the equivalent of the indoor compressor, the indoor component. So it's all packed into one unit that sits inside the house, and there are two vents that sit on the outside that vent out the compressor. Um, here, you can see our unit in exploded view, and I'll just point out the most important components. Here we have a super high efficiency heat exchanger coil on the inside of the unit sitting in the, in the, outer, in the outdoor component, but sitting inside the home. Um, here is our inverter compressor. Here we have a condensate heating coil. This is actually very important because when the compressor runs in reverse cycle and it's giving heating, so the condensate in cooling mode, the condensate is hot. In cooling, in heating mode, the condensate is cold. So if the condensate were to drip outside the building, for those people who use this to dr uh, drain outside, it could potentially freeze. So what we do is we warm the condensate in the condensate pan over here 
using a heating coil. And this is not just a regular heating coil using electricity. It's actually the, sorry, it's the return of the coil system going back in. So there's no energy wasted. And it basically just gently heats that condensate before it's released. Um, here we have, we use EC motors for everything. Um, that's electronically controlled. So it's actually one up from where you have a, um, a, brushless, a brushless motor. Brushless motor can be controlled in nonlinear fashion. So here you have an electronic controller controlling a brushless motor, and it's called EC. It gives you the highest level of efficiency and also the most control because we can set the fans to go from a CFM of uh, 10 to 300 in any jump we want. Um, here we have, you can see on the, from the inside, the outside, here are the two six inch vents that vent outside. All right, performance. So here we have on an inverter compressor, there are two numbers that are important. One is the rated number, and that's the rating that we give based, our, based on our COP and EER. And then we give our maximum capacity. The maximum capacity, you wouldn't want to design around that. So for example, if you had a room that needed 8,000 BTUs, you would not want to put into it, let's say 10,000 BTUs, you would not want to put our system in there only because you're maxing out the compressor the whole time. This is useful for those 1% a year where it's extremely hot or cold or where you have extra guests or something like that that you're not going to overtax the system. So at 47 degrees, this system can give 8,100 BTUs and it can max out at 10,500. At 17 degrees, we can give around 4,800 BTUs at the rated and we can go up to 5,800 BTUs. At five degrees, we can go up to around 4,200 BTUs on the rated, and we can max out at around 4,800 BTUs. So it actually gives quite a bit of heating power at low temperatures. Heating efficiency, our COP is pretty high. At 47 degrees, which is the typical rated temperature, we're at a 3.5 COP, dropping to around a 1.8 at 17 degrees, and a 1.6, I think, at five degrees. These are all pretty good, um, considering that the unit is inside the house. Um, and the performance is not as good as a mini's ductless, um, but it's close, especially at the colder temperatures. On cooling capacity, you know, all those varying baskets, but you have 95 degrees outdoors, 95 degrees outdoors, we give 8,100 BTUs and we can max out at 10,000 BTUs of cooling. Our cooling efficiency, is 11 EER. I want to show you an example. I'm going to skip. Yeah, um, gas fired. Um, heating system. And here you can see the step one is you mount the temping, you put the, temp, the mounting template on the wall so you know where to drill your holes and where to put your bracket. The next thing you do is drill your holes. Here you can see that drill from the outside. In this application, they used eight inch holes. You can use six inch holes or you can use eight inch holes. The performance is actually better at eight inch holes. We, the numbers I showed you before are for six inch holes. Performance for eight inch holes is about 6% uh, better. Um, here you can see the um, brackets that hold on the louvers. This, this person over here used our, the least expensive louver available, which are about $26 a piece. And I'll get to those in a minute, which options we have. Here you can see from the inside, the hole, the vents inside the wall, the bracket on the wall, the electric cord, and the drain. Here you can see from the outside, the louvers are on. This is how they look. They can be painted to match the house. Actually, this company, Primex, makes them in different colors. Um, and here you can see the unit sitting inside the house on the wall neatly and ready to work. Um, one thing really unique about our unit is they're fully paintable. You can paint them any color you want. I mean, just back up to over here. All of this is metal. So you would simply just remove this panel over here, paint this front panel, paint this, paint all these panels over here. They all come off with one or two screws. They can paint the match or blend, in, blend into the wall or stand out, whichever design you'd want to put onto the unit. If a unit is not, it can't be mounted under a window or above a window, what is common is that you can use a sidewall adapter, any wall which is perpendicular to the exterior wall, and pop our sidewall adapter into the, into the wall and then put our unit on top of it. All that would be visible inside the room is the unit this fits inside the wall. 
events. So you can get, you can choose a vent from anything that's extremely inexpensive from Primex. These guys are about twenty-seven dollars a piece. Um, you can go out the sun vent, which is the most expensive. Where on the outside you simply have a nice clean linear single grill made out of metal. You can have these any color you want. And also X vent box makes one similar to the Primex, a little more sophisticated looking, which goes on which has two of them instead of one big linear grill. Um, this I'll just breeze through and I'll leave about four minutes, seven minutes for questions. So in new construction, I've actually developed a couple of different kits that allow for it to be um, installed in new construction. Here's one where you have a window assembly, which includes a louver built into it. And from the outside of the building, all you would see is a simple clean window with a four inch louver below it. Um, this is something we developed actually for a product in New York City, a skyscraper, where they want to have these typically ugly big PTAC grills all over the place. So we designed a slim line louver that would fit all through the whole building um, and the unit vents out right through that. Um, here is a very unique solution actually for existing houses and buildings that don't want to drill holes. We actually have a project in New York City like this. So we can have an adapter that goes inside the room and then it vents out through the windowsill and then you have a little louver below the window. So it looks like this on the outside. Um, this would be a typical installation where you would cut in something like a sun, sun vent box into the wall and install a louver in front of it. And here's our unit, unit sitting behind it. Um, one very unique aspect is that no drain is required for cooling. Again, this was developed because in Europe, you have so many applications where there's no drain nearby. So not always accomplished no drain required, but it actually boosts the efficiency of our unit and performance by about 10%. It takes the condensate um, and puts it into a drain pan and then pumps it up to a dispenser on the top of the coil, which drizzles it down. And then as soon as it hits the coil, it evaporates and just sends it right out of the units. So there's no need for a drain in cooling and it also enhances the, uh, the work of the unit. The controls we went through in the beginning, um, care of the unit's extremely easy. Simply pop off the top grill, take the filter out. The filter can be either washed off um, or vacuumed off. Um, the warranty, our warranty is exceptional. We offer an in-house warranty. Typically systems like this will require you to ship the components back to the manufacturer's um, uh, assembly plant, uh, or repair facility, or whatever it is, which can cost hundreds of dollars at a time and pay for shipping both ways. Our system is in your home. We will come to your home, either repair the unit or swap it out. One year is a complete full warranty on everything. Uh, 10 years you have on the compressor that covers anything in the sealed system, we replace the entire system. And we give a nine year parts only, again, in your house, you pay for labor, but parts are included. Um, costs. So, Sean, is this, most of this audience is um, retail or, or wholesale? Uh, I think you have, um, well, there's some developers, you know, who are posting comments over here in the chat and you have questions. Um, so, okay. I, I I think, well, it's going to be both. You know, some people. Okay, like no problem. We're transparent on our pricing. Yeah. So our pricing is as follows. For people who buy the units directly from us, uh, depending on the, the, price, the price you buy them, the volume you buy them for, this is our price. The shipping, I think how it's shipped, air freight or ocean freight will run between 40 and 350. You may require an LCD power cord, 35 bucks. The vents, depending on which one you pick, 60 to 200 hours. Installation, depending on how long it takes, what that installation is, between 250 and 500 hours. Total cost is around one, around two thousand, three thousand. There are generous rebates, of about a thousand dollars a unit, depending on the application. With your total cost being a thousand to two thousand dollars, this would be for a contractor um, or a developer. For residential units, we offer a complete price of three nine nine five, which includes installation, vents, the cords, uh, shipping, and everything. Um, and we are made in Italy. Okay, I guess I have five minutes left for questions, so. Cool. Well, a lot of people want to know about the MERV rating on the filter. So we, we've just gone through smoke season and um, what is the filter? And so people want indoor air filters. What kind of filtration can your product support? What MERV? Okay, so in this system, it's a closed system. There is no fresh air coming in, though we do have a fresh air HRV. Um, but without that, the filter, which is on the system is a very low MERV. It's a MERV 2. It's a washable filter the same kind of filter you find on a mini split. 
Um, if you want to have some sort of air filtration for the air inside, you have to be different different system other than ours. But again, to be clear, there is no outside air coming into the system. It is only recirculating the air inside the room. Got it. So then um, can you talk a little bit about that HRV? Um, Seth Capron was asking about that, Capron. Um, okay. Yeah. Our, HR, our HRV um, is really not ideal for California for multiple reasons. One of the main reason is our HRV only brings in around 15 CFMs of fresh air. Number two, the MERV on our HRV is only a MERV of five. So I don't think it's so applicable for California. Right. People should get a separate, specialized, effective air filter. Not hard right. to use this system particularly, which I see that yeah. a lot. Is like it, it, if you have a problem, get a specialty product to solve a problem. Don't try to use an all-in-one because you're probably not going to get it. Um, we actually do have a system we're coming out with called um, VHP 2.0, which includes um, a fresh air system, and it's a very complex system. But that's not for this chat. So uh, I see over here the BTU rating. So our unit is one size fits all. It's uh, no, it's about it's a it's a um, rated of eight thousand, but you can use design temperatures up to nine thousand BTUs of heating and cooling. Okay, what about the the, the um, way Ty, I was saying, hey, cool idea on no condensate and the outdoor drain. Is it venting the humidity into the room or outside, and is there any risk of overflow in certain geographic regions or of high humidity? You know, think the American tropical, subtropical South, <laughs> like you know, okay. Florida. So let me answer both of those. So number one, it does not vent into the room. The bottom portion of the unit is completely sealed, it's hermetically sealed to the inside, so there's no chance of it going out, and the humidity is vented outside of the house with the exhaust. As far as the condensate, there's no risk at all of overpowering the system because the the condensate, the the heat exchanger coils are extraordinarily hot. Uh, we can, we can um, I think, process up to uh, seven liters an hour of condensate, which is, you'd have to have like, I don't know, 100% humidity in order to accomplish that. So there'd never be an issue like that. Okay, um, question about the ease of installation. And Tim Kohut, he's a, both a general contractor and a developer, like his company is. And so they're mm -hmm. interested in, um, uh, you know, how easy is it to install? Uh, installation, in case you, if you saw the, the little screenshots, installation is extremely easy. You're basically drilling two holes, uh, putting a mounting bracket, putting a louver on the outside and dropping the unit on and plugging it in. Um, if it, you, could, you, could, you could do an installation in under an hour if you have all your ducks in a row. Um, Okay, well, we are at 11.10, and there's a whole bunch more good questions for you. I hope we don't mind if I shift you over to chat. Um, are, are you comfortable answering some Sure, questions? I can do that. Yeah, no problem. I can answer the question in the chat. Thank you so much. Yay, okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and actually, the last question I have for you before you go is this negative five degrees Fahrenheit. Is that coming out on your brochure soon? Is that, how real is that? Oh, it's real. It's there. I mean, we can do negative five. The the COP, we don't list and we don't list the performance on it. I can right. tell you that our, our COP at negative five is around 1.4, 1.35. And the BTUs is probably around uh, 3,700 BTUs, 3,800 BTUs. Okay. So you have to be aware that, that that is a low efficiency, low capacity, but it still works. I mean, that's still yeah. not electric resistance, which would be, you know, COP of 0 0.9 or something, right? 0.95? Right. We do offer, we do, by the way, offer a, um, a heating strip. You can get a one or two kilowatt heat strip to add on to the unit. Right. Hey, oh, and um, Baki, can you guys hear me better now? I figured out a trick with my, my uh, microphone. Is the sound better? I guess hopefully yes. you can hear me. Okay, good. Well, um, thank you, Yehuda. Uh, I really look forward to getting that, that increased cold climate specification in there because, like I said, there's a lot of, of um, northern states in the United States. I mean, you live in New York sometimes. That's right. <laughs> you know? uh, yes, yes, and it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay, okay thank I you. will get that over to you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Yehuda. Hey, Michaela.